on December 14, 1926, she was found at the <clears throat> Old Swan Hotel. And th th this is how good she was. She uh, registered under Mrs. Teresa Neal, which was her husband's mistress's surname. So yeah, <laughs> she used it against him, more or less. And interesting, you know, it's just interesting how, you know, she did that. How could you disappear for 10 days? Nobody knew where she was at all. Interesting, interesting. So, and what made her character stand out? Um, interesting to note, she created memorable and dignified characters, which any class of readers could relate to. The most memorable of them are, of course, Hercule Poirot and Miss Marple. That's examples of her skill to develop uh, high society characters and to have uh, like a mainstream appeal. In 1920, Hercule Poirot was um, introduced. He was a Belgian private investigator, and he appeared in 33 novels. Um, he was he was a character. If you remember, there was a TV series of that. Um, so you know he was uh, that was a good show. It was interesting. I remember my mom liked it. In nineteen from nineteen twenty to nineteen seventy five, Miss Marple used her amateur sleuthing to solve crimes, and she is featured in twelve novels and twenty two short stories. Um, Agatha always looked for creative inspiration around her. She observed people, their mannerisms, how they looked, um, how they acted. And the, the only problem was it, the genre that she chose kind of stunted her writing process a little. Um, it was the difficulty of putting reality into fictional environments. She couldn't imagine them doing, she couldn't imagine her characters doing murder. Um, so it kind of created uh, a writer's block for her. And to overcome this, she would develop many characters from scratch, from the bottom up. She would create them, uh, dress them, you know, mannerisms and everything that she took from people around her. Um, she would note physical appearances of strangers, how they acted, and she was able to create these relatable characters that everybody could, you know, associate with. She was adept in combining period subject matter with delicate story development, her creative plot structure and psychology. And, and that is most evident in her brilliant finale, Curtain. Now, this was written long before her death, but she had it, uh, she ordered it to be kept in a bank safe until, until her death. Um, it was only to be published afterwards. It's a masterpiece that utilizes the best of her talent. So, writer's block. There you go, Chris. See, she she overcame that by developing her, developing her character from scratch. Um, she she was an amazing writer. Amazing. Um, some of her books are After the Funeral, and then there were none. Murder at the Vicarage, and of course the ABC Murders. Death on the Nile, a pocket full of rye. She was just amazing. Um, I, she's got to be one of the best uh, read um, ever. I have read, a, I love her books. They are absolutely brilliant. So I don't know if anybody has read her. Did you read her, Lori, Agatha Christie? I don't know many people that haven't. So, um, yeah, she's... Uh, amazing her her character structure is uh uh i i like it a little better almost than Ann Perry's because Ann Perry can really get detailed and that kind of gets um by the end of the end of reading one of her books sometimes you can describe that char Ann Perry's character from head to toe in exactly what they had what they were wearing what they had in their pockets um how they kept their hair down to the minutest detail. She was she was that descriptive, uh, and it, it kind of sometimes it got a little you know much. But yeah, she's awesome, isn't she, Laura? I just absolutely love her. Yeah, she's uh, she's great. I don't know anybody who hasn't really read Agatha Christie at least once, at least once. So, <coughs> excuse me. She uh, just used everything at her disposal, and she was 
excellent at it, excellent. She's a grand dame of the uh, mystery writers. And now we're going to move on. We're going to, well, we're going to take a little break. I got some uh, murder music for you. <laughs> Detective murder music. Uh, so, interesting. If you can remember some of these, um, let me know. Um, I took some of the um, excerpts and music from the 50s, uh, 60s radio shows. So, um, I hope you enjoy them as much as I did. The shadow's watching, so you, you guys just better be careful out there. And now, Mystery Theater. <laughs> Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. She is an incredibly imposing figure, Queen Liliolani, last of a pure line of Polynesian royalty, save for the handsome son she faces, nearly eye level to eye level, although Danny Makihini is well over six feet. Always a woman of Amazonian proportions, middle age has blown her to gargantuan size and girth. And her anger and emotion is as monumental as the rest of her. Marry a haole? I'd as soon see you dead. Oh, come on, Mother. It's the 20th century, and Hawaii is a state, not a monarchy. The Polynesian and the American Indian are two of a kind. Two civilizations pirated. Their lands raped and stolen, their countries plundered, and their people sold into virtual slavery. You should be running for the Senate. I should.
Okay, welcome back to KBLP, uh, the book corner with Denise Ayers. I hope you thought those were.